Nobody, Clay. My daddy cheated on my mama. Nobody, Clay. You know, my daddy, he cheated on my mother. Yeah. Mm hmm. You know, Jay Z cheated on Beyonce. Yeah, and Will Smith was cheating on Jada. Yeah, and that's why I just can't trust myself to be faithful during Black Women's, Black History, Black Women's Month. All these diamonds on my body and they crystal clear. I make magic with these hundreds, watch them disappear. Uh huh. Big ol' raindrops up in my ear. If you gon' name drop, let's get it clear. Jesse, woo! Chanel. All right, let's go ahead and jump into uh, this Love is Blind, uh, what, episode, what, what episodes was it? Episode 10 and 11. Before I do that, y'all, if you are new here, make sure that you subscribe and join the Black Women's Tribe, okay? Uh, and if you are a returning sister, I love you. Thank you so, so much for tuning in for another video. Uh, I hope that you like and that you share and that you leave a comment as well on your thoughts on the video. Um, Y'all, I'm actually shooting this video. It is 11.27 p.m. I went to work earlier at Dish Nation. I think a lot of you guys who are new don't know that I am a co-host at Dish Nation. It is a nationally syndicated talk show that I am a co-host on. It is on Fox, so make sure that you check your local listings. Um... What else? I went to work and then when I left work, I went to a cover girls dinner. Cover girls came and did a black history dinner here in Atlanta and they invited a lot of black beauty uh, uh, creators. I'm not a beauty creator, but T <laughs> Tierra Monet, who was a good friend of mine, she actually was like, listen, here go the email, you, you need to come. And I wasn't invited, she was invited. Um, but she said, you need to be here. And I was like, you know, I, I don't really create beauty content like that. And she was like, no, no, you, you be wearing makeup. You need to come. And she's always like trying to encourage me to do more and be consistent with like beauty content, which I am going to do. Like if you follow me on socials, I just started just a couple things. Um, and so that's going to cover my commentary on television shows. And also I will be doing like more beauty content on there to go along with my commentary on shows but here's a little look at how i got ready for tonight's cover girl dinner we haven't talked about it so praise the lord for the privilege of it all this is a privilege and This eye look is insane. I need to be on somebody's beach. Mind you, it's raining outside. Like, it is storming in Atlanta today. Now they got the beers coming out. <laughs> now they got the doggone beers coming out. The man was a videographer for Diddy, and he was saying that his anus was broke multiple times. Do you know where your anus is located? We talking about a grown man. Multiple times this man grabbed you in your anus. Bottom of my shoes, stay with different flavors, crazy, sexy, cool. Yeah, and these niggas they want all free. Yeah, yeah, your One nigga, he be on each walk. I love so much. Like, I could just bathe in it. I freaking love that. Like, it is my favorite beach walk. So, this is the best. On. Well, I actually with my sneakers on I have to go to work. Uh, but I'll put these on when I get to the restaurant. But yeah, what do you guys think? I feel like I'm giving Island Girl. I believe these braids are from Ghana. These are over two months old now. These are my Ghana braids. Like, hello. 
I gotta go back to Ghana and get my hair done. <laughs> just, I have to. All right, let's go have dinner with Cover Girl. Ooh, hold on, let me look at the sisters. Yes, it is giving. It is giving. I know, it's like it's in Maryland. And um, be quick on your feet. No, Maryland and um, Lupita. 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 Kenya. No, Kenya. Kenya Moore. Kenya Moore. They gave us this nice gift bag and they have a new uh, makeup line. Cover Girl Simply Ageless Skin Perfector Essence. Okay, so I think they gave us like all eight shades. Can you guys see this? Sometimes on my face is still, okay. So they gave us like eight different shades of this. Um, so it's like a hydro, so it's a face tint. But from what they were saying, it has retinol in it, and so it and it gives um so the retinol obviously retinol is really good for your skin, but also it has like this blur finish. So you know I'll use it in an upcoming video just to show you guys how it looks. But anyway, I want to thank CoverGirl, and I hope the CoverGirl does come back to Atlanta. There are a lot of black beauty influencers. I saw so many girls that I watch all the time on here and I really hope that these brands come down to Atlanta. I know it's not New York, I know it's not LA, but Atlanta has the girlies. Like Atlanta has the wave and I feel like Atlanta influencers are the next big wave and I really hope that these brands understand that and that they come and they do invest more in the black creators that are here. Um, you know, I it's, maybe it's because I'm here, but I, I see so many beautiful black girls here in Atlanta creating such high level content around beauty. So I, I hope that these companies come more often. I have Lilim, uh, which is a song that I released in November. It is over 300K. Thank you so, so much, you guys, for making Lilim go over 300K. Uh, it is a great, great song in my opinion. So I'm really happy that you guys are liking it, that you're sharing it with each other. Just want to let you guys know those th couple things, and now we can move on. We can move on to the T for today, which is Love Is Blind episode 10 and 11. Let's just get to it, y'all. Um, so we're starting off with Jeremy, who we found out last episode that jeremy is haitian jeremy's haitian because he had a whole side family that he left <laughs> okay jeremy had a wife and a child that he was living with and he said you know what i'm not gonna let my child and my wife stop me from finding real love so he got his Haitian ass up out of that motherfucking house and he came down to Love is Blind to find real love, okay? This motherfucker had a whole side wife and a whole... This motherfucker had a whole wife and kids. And he left them people to come to Love is Blind to find real love. Like, it's really crazy. And so we start off with him and his mother who I thought was super duper cute i think his mother was very very cute very likable and he tells his mother the story and his mother's like well damn so i ain't gonna have no daughter-in-law now like i could have told you that he was like yeah you know she's very upset with me and his daughter like yeah like his mother was like yeah i, I could have told you that so here here's the tea on jeremy so apparently the street said 
Jérémie, Jérémie went down to the bar, met up with Sarah Ann. Salah, qui était dans le bar là, il est dans le bar là, il a parlé. They talking at the bar. At 11 o'clock at night. Ok, qu'on a 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, the bar close. Qu'on a ça, Jérémy fait. Jérémy is leaving his phone at the parking lot in the bar. Turn on his location. You do send me the location. Okay? Turn on his location so Laura can take his at the ball. Kunya lel fini. He's leaving the ball. He's going to Sarah's house to drop her off. Okay? They're still talking till 5 o'clock in the morning. It's 5 in the morning. I'm up talking Thursday to you. Mom for me. Mom for me. Okay! Not pretty rigged. Pretty rigged, rigged, rigged. Not five in the morning. Jeremy, you ain't she. Kunya, Jeremy, leave the phone at the ball. So the phone is saying location at the ball. But sa Jeremy pas réalisé, he's have a Apple Watch. And when you have a Apple Watch, it's sending a location. And I'll be right there. Okay? It's sending your active location. So when he was at Sarah's house, the location was sent to Sarah. Sarah, wait, Sarah can see that the motherfucker was at. Eh, eh, no, no, hold on, wait. It wasn't Sarah. Who's was the mother? Laura can see that the motherfucker was at Sarah's house. So now, when Jeremy get back to the house and say that, oh no, I was down to the bar, I'm just talking, no! Laura can say, no, 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 because I'm checking your Apple Watch. And the Apple Watch say, you was at Sarah's house. Malfecte. Salop with sal. Karachien. Mudachire. Eh oh, eh, eh, moi pas comprendre. Eh oh. <laughs> Let me tell you something about Jeremy. Jeremy really ain't shit. Um, my thing is, if you gonna be an ain't shit man, at least be ain't shit and make it make sense. Make it make sense. Okay? Because there's no way that you could have thought that Laura would be okay with you staying up to the next day with the girl who was your number two in the pods, a girl you almost proposed to. You're thinking that Laura would be okay with that? You're thinking that Laura would, would believe that y'all was just staying up all night talking? Like, get the fuck out of here. Be for real. That's beyond disrespectful. Like, I don't... I, sometimes I say men are dumb, but I don't think men are dumb. I think men know exactly what they're doing. They're just trying to see what they can get away with. They will play in your face... And as long as you let them play in, their, in, in your face, they will keep doing it. They will play chess, checkers, Monopoly, Jenga, tic-tac-toe, all that shit. Solitaire. As long as you let a man play in your face, baby, he gonna be, he gonna be hopscotching. That's gonna be that motherfucker all damn day in your motherfucking face. Because you are letting him play in your face. And I think Jeremy is a play in your face type of motherfucker. And he met the right one because one thing about Laura, she's a lot of things, but she don't play games, okay? Okay, y'all. I don't know if I'm tipsy from the cover girl dinner, but Jimmy looked it good to me this episode. I don't know, y'all. Am I down bad? 
Y'all, Jimmy, it wasn't giving Jiminy Cricket no more. I don't know. It's something very likable about Jimmy to me. He looked like an old-ass 27-year-old, but he looked like an old-ass 27-year-old. Like, he went through the Civil War, the Great Depression, you know, smallpox. You know what I'm saying? Like, he just looked old as fuck. He looked old as dirt. Like, you know, like, the first dirt that God created, he looked like he was formed back then. He might be the first Adam. We don't know. You know what I'm saying? But in this episode, he had a little bit kind of fine to me. I don't know. Maybe I'm down bad, y'all. You know, I haven't been hunched in a minute. I haven't been touched. Nobody has touched the ins my inside part for a while. So, I don't know if like is it. I don't know if I got dry coochie syndrome, but <laughs> he looked good to me. <laughs> and then when we meet his his family in this episode, his family looked it exactly how I pictured him. Like, it was given. I'm not going to say what it was given. Y'all know what it was given. <laughs> but his family gave exactly what I thought it would give. And his family was really cute to me. His mother was so sweet. I think out of all the mothers I've met on this show, not I've met, but I, I, we've, we've met so many nice mothers. And I feel like his mother was, like, the sweetest and you could tell, like, Jeremy was everything to her. It kind of reminds me of how my mom is about my brother Jeremy. I have three siblings. And I remember one time we all went out to eat. And we were telling my mom, Mom, you have a favorite. She's like, no, oh, me? No, I, I don't have no favorite. I don't have no favorite. And we all said it together, Jeremy. Oh, oh why you say that? Bitch, because we know, girl, that's your favorite. That's, that is your favorite child. That's your favorite child, lady. Shut the fuck up. We know Jeremy's your favorite. Please shut that shit up. Like, my my brother Jeremy, my brother Jeremy could literally get up right now and go bomb three high schools and kill everybody. And my mama would still be like, oh, not my son. My son. Not my son. My son. Not my son. Jeremy, my son, not my son. We can show her the footage and everything. She still won't believe that shit. Jeremy is her favorite child, okay? Like, it's just, oh, Lord. That's a, let me tell you, mothers and their sons, mm-mm. My God. But, um, Chelsea was so normal meeting his family like it was so normal like her meeting the family was like actually like a vibe and i liked like his mother gave like realistic expectations she was talking about how yeah you know i've been with your daddy for 40 some years and you know some things you know i didn't like about him and some things he didn't like about me and his daddy was like yeah you know my number one thing i don't like about your mama is she's a pack rat and then they got to laugh. And he's like, the second thing I don't like about your mama is she's a pack rat. Now, you know, I'm black. I don't know what the fuck a pack rat mean. Does that mean she's a hoarder? Like, does she hoard a lot of things? Like, does she like, I don't know what the fuck that mean. Somebody white let me know in the comments. I have no idea what that is. This is a black woman's channel. And during black women's, black history, black women's month, I have no idea what a pack rat is. Somebody drop that in the comments and let me know what the fuck that is. All right. Then we get to A.D. and Clay. AD and her mom are waiting to meet Clay. And we realize that, yet again, Clay is not coming home. Mind you, last episode, that was the concern, that he wasn't coming home, right? And so, AD was saying how she, the night before, had planned an arts and craft dinner. And the arts and crafts dinner for, was for them to do like some special arts and crafts. And she wanted to, you know, facilitate a moment for them to tell each other or to show each other 25 things that they love about the other person. And she had a big layout and she laid it out for him. So when he came home, they would have dinner and they would be able to spend that time together. And he didn't come home. He did not come home. So he gets there and her mom is asking questions that... I haven't seen AD ask this man, what do you do? Like, you know what I realized with AD? AD is very beautiful, but 
I don't think this girl understands how beautiful she is. Because even before Clay got to the table, she kept telling her mom, oh, he's a looker. He's fine. He's a looker. And as she was saying that, I realized again, this man has never called her beautiful. When have we ever heard Clay say, AD is a beautiful girl. She's so gorgeous. Oh my God. I, I love looking at her. We've never heard that. But she's like gung ho for him because he's such a good, he's a looker. He's a looker. She kept telling her mom, he's a looker. He's a looker. And it's like, we never hear him say these things about you. Ever. We never hear him compliment you ever, ever, ever. And so his mother, so, and so Clay gets there and her mother starts asking questions that I feel need to be asked, you know, because the concern about him coming home, not coming home at night comes up again. Does he work for the secret service or something? Does he work for the secret service or something? Like. <laughs> The fact that her mom had to ask that, cause like, yeah, like, why is this guy not coming home ever? Why is he not coming home? And so later on, like we have her mom asking like, so what do you do? Wait, tell me what, what do you do? I'm in a uh, tech sales. I've been out of a side business. Uh, I do like Airbnb, like uh, rent out apartments. Mm -hmm. And also I rent out like boats and jet skis. You guys go good together. He's in tech sales. He does Airbnb, he, rent, he rents out apartments, which, and then he rents out boats. First of all, all three of these things can be done from home. So why are you not coming home? I really wish her mom would have asked that, but also like AD, like I, I have yet to hear AD, like I've heard her say like, you're not coming home, but it's like, I wish I would have heard AD at least one time voice these jobs that you have can be done from home. These are home jobs. So why are you not coming home? I rent out apartments. I do Airbnb, I rent out apartments. Anybody who tells y'all they do Airbnb and they rent out apartments is full of shit. Let's just keep it a buck. Them Airbnb businesses that y'all be seeing people have, they're lying to you. They're full of shit. What they're doing is they're doing like these little online classes to teach you how to do the Airbnb shit and you're not gonna get to do it. You cannot make any money off of Airbnb unless you own the home. And if you don't believe me, do your research. It's a lot, just go online when you're done with this video, go online and search Airbnb apartment scams. It's not, it's not a real thing. They're not making any money. Okay, so that already X's out one of his so-called jobs. And then he rents boats. Are these boats that you bought? Like, you know, I have a lot of questions. I just don't see AD asking this man any real questions ever. And as I'm watching this scene, I come to the realization, the only time AD sees Clay is when the cameras are on. This man does not care to be seen with you, does not care to spend any time with you, unless it's time to film. Why are you still here? And then as the scene continues, I realize, oh, you're still here because you get it from your mama. And not to be disrespectful to her mother, but we're just gonna keep going through the scene and we're gonna, we're gonna see what the problem here is. What do you feel about being married, like you yourself? I was looking for it's like adaptability and someone yeah. to be my best friend. And I just feel like AD is like a walking testimony of like what I was looking for. AD just be eating this shit up, just. <laughs> she just be eating this shit up. Like girl, stand up. Come Compe! Compe! He's saying a bunch of nothing. Nothing. Nothing! And she just... I showed my mom before I came here, gave me the verse Proverbs 3, verse 5, which is what I told her during my uh, proposal mm -hmm. of me not leaning on my own or saying leaning on God's. Mm -hmm. I just felt like I was meant to be here. <laughs> AD 
AD's mom. Oh, he know the Bible. Oh, he know the Bible. You want to, let me tell you something. You want to impress a black mama, just give her a verse. I've said this before. I think I did a Poor Minds episode like three years ago and I said this. You want to impress a black mom, give her a Bible verse. You know, before I came here, my mama gave me the Proverbs 3, you know, you know, lean not to your own understanding. Like, shut that shit the fuck up. You, this is the same motherfucker that proposed to AD with a Bible and tequila, y'all. <laughs> like, and then he go, her mama, ooh, <laughs> he, he know the Bible. <laughs> Mind you, your daughter just told you this man don't be coming home. I do have stuff that I struggle with, like stuff with my parents' relationship. I never went to therapy, so a lot so of why do you say your parents' relationship? I mean, they they were married for 24, 25 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like that's big. That's big. And you think about how many people there are on this planet, and how lucky we are to have like a good love for twenty five years or fourteen years. You got to. Have somebody for you. You know, my daddy cheated on my mom, so you know, I got a lot of demons and I'm fighting. You know, my daddy did cheat on my mom. He has his lines ready. He has his lines ready. Unprovoked. How you doing? You know, my daddy cheated on my mama. What's the weather like today? You know, my daddy cheated on my mama, and you know, he used to take me on his infidelity trips. What you got going on today? You know, I'm, I got demons, man. My daddy cheated on my mama. What? What are we talking about? It's the way that he's letting her mama know too, baby. I'm not about to be your, your daughter's knight in shining armor. I am going to cheat on your daughter. I'm not. I, and, and, and to be honest, like, I'm not even trying to be there for your daughter like that. Like, it, it's not giving that. I do like that her mom said, why do you keep bringing your parents up as if the whole thing was negative? They were together for 24 years. I, I love that her mom said that. But what I don't like about her mother, though, is like you pin her mom was able to pinpoint that. Why do you keep casting this negative cloud on your mother and your father's relationship? They were together for 24 years. I really wish she would say, what is your real like? What is your real thing here? Like, do you want to be married? Do you want to marry my daughter? Do you see yourself being faithful to my daughter? Is this experiment something, is marriage something that you were truly looking forward to? Or are you using that as an excuse to not take this commitment seriously? I was, I was looking for her mom to do that. I was really looking for that because even his mom his mom wasn't hard, a hard hitter, but his mom was like, yo, if you, if the love is there, you will make the time. If you really feel that, that she's important to you, you will make the time. I don't care about your schedule. And so I was looking for her mom to back that up. And she didn't. She didn't. AD gets it from her mama. She gets it from her mama. Already have the tools that they need to make it. Wow. <laughs> Amber. Amber. Her mom is like so amazed by him. I'm just like, is it, maybe there's something that the Love is Blind editors are not showing us when it comes to Clay. Because what are they exactly amazed by? Amber, oh my God, Amber, Amber what? <laughs> this man hasn't said nothing to y'all. He hasn't said nothing to Amber, to your daughter. He don't even come home to your daughter. And he's saying the first chance he gets to talk to you, he tells you, you know, my daddy cheated my mama, you know, well, I ain't seen no real good relationship. So, you know, I don't know. Like, a sight unseen because then we learned that AD told her mother that she would follow this man anywhere. And mind you, her mom says, I've never heard you say that about a man before. I've never heard you say you're going to follow somebody. 
I, I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm being on a cliff I'm without him. a parachute because I know he'll be down there and he will catch me. That's how much I trust him, and that's how much he showed me Have how you said trustworthy that he. We gotta rewind this. I'm trying to be funny. So I'm being on a cliff I'm without never. a parachute because I know he'll be down there and he will catch me. That's how much I trust him. AD said she would follow this man off a cliff. No parachute. That's how much she trusts him. She trusts that he would catch her. Mind you, she's saying this about a man who doesn't even come home to her, who she only sees when the cameras are on. I will follow him, follow him wherever he may go. Oh, to the keep me where like this girl is delusional. Nah, Clay must have some fire ass dick. That's Caribbean men for you. Caribbean men have sweet dick. Like, I can't, there's really no other way to describe it. They have sweet dick. Like, it goes in smooth. No matter how big and wide and girthy it is, it goes in smooth. Smooth. Smooth operator. Smooth operator. They got smooth dick. That man been putting that smooth soup at the beach dick in this girl. She don't know what the fuck to do. Because how the fuck you going to sit there and tell your mama, I will follow this man off a cliff, no parachute. Because I, I know, I know it. I know it. I know it. I know he'd catch me. I know it. Oh, I know it. Mind you, this motherfucker don't even come home to you. He don't even come up during Black Women's Black History Black Men Month. <laughs> not Black Men. During Black Women's Black History Black Women's Month. How you gonna tell your mama that you would follow Clay, who is bisexualis? <laughs> and y'all not gonna tell me any. He is bisexualis. How you going to tell me you going to follow him off a cliff? No parachute. And your mama's like, ooh, have you told him that? Huh, sugar, have you told him that? Have you told him that? Into place. Whatever's going on with his parents or your parents, that's our shit. Mm -hmm. And y'all fight this stuff together. We do it together. You hear me? And for some strange reason, if he doesn't think that your all is enough for him, then that's not your guy. I got a woman here. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got a woman here. I really wish that that's the tone her mother had for the entire sit down. If give it your all, but if that's not enough for him, that's not your guy. That's not your guy. That's the realest thing her mom told her in this entire thing. If it's not enough for this man, he is not your guy. But as they continue, it's like her mom is encouraging her, is encouraging her to keep giving this man her all. And it's like, girl, this man doesn't even come home to your daughter. Barack? Yeah. Michelle? Yeah. Michelle? Yeah. <laughs> Get on Barack. Okay. Definitely get on Barack. Barack, Michelle, the, the black love, the black excellent. Like, that is killing the black community. It really is, y'all. Like, y'all are not Barack and Michelle. Please stop. Like, these people went to Ivy League schools. These people were, were serious about what the fuck they were doing. There's nothing serious about what's going on over here. Nothing serious. This man is playing in this woman's face. And her mom is like, oh yeah, Barack and Michelle. I can't. All right, let's move on, y'all. Let's move on to Jimmy and Chelsea. They're back at her place. And, you know, 
This is after Jimmy introduced Chelsea to his parents, told his parents he loves her, told his parents that this is the woman for her, and his parents co-signed it. Like, you know, you know what? If he loves you, we love you. We're ready for, to have you in the family. And she's cranky. She's cranky because last night, Jimmy went out for one hour to go have drinks. And this turns into, I don't want to be with a man who wants to go out and party all the time. You went out with your friend. Mind you, we already had met Jimmy's best friends. They were women. And now it's a problem that they were women. Apparently, one of the friends he actually did have a sexual relationship with. But Jimmy was forthcoming about that from the get-go. But now she's upset about I know you fucked her. You fucked her. And now she's upset about it. Because he went out for one hour, right? Mind you, before he went out, he told her he was going down to a bar for a friend's birthday. Just going to make a quick appearance and his best friends were going to be there. Now she's upset because one of her friends told her, oh, I saw Jimmy at a bar. Oh, people are telling me that they saw you at a bar. Mind you, he told her he was going to this bar before he went out. Now it turns into, oh, you were there with Jess which he wasn't. And he's like, yo, you're fishing. And honestly, at this point, like, I, I, it, like, I can't keep doing this. I can't keep doing this. And she's like, well, you know, it, it makes me sad. I just feel sad. It makes me sad. And he's like, and she's like, well, you know, I, and I just don't feel like you love me. And he's like, you know, if you don't feel like I loved you after I don't introduce you to my parents and told them that I loved you, you and I can call it quits. We can be done. I'm done with this. I'm done. And it's like, as soon as he grew a pair of balls, finally, her tears stopped coming because she realized that it just wasn't working. And this man packed up his shit and was like, I'm leaving. Oh, please only. He's like, no, I'm leaving. You overstepped your boundaries. I'm gone. I'm fucking gone. But of course, later on, we saw Chelsea come back to the house and Jimmy told her, listen, I don't want to be married. I don't want to get married to you. You obviously don't think that I love you. Like, I can't keep doing this back and forth stuff. And she cries a little bit. And they make up. And they're back engaged. At this point, honestly, like, because I'm not going to go back and forth and show the footage. I, I actually, I'm, I'm, I'm actually disgusted by Chelsea. Like, like, to be honest, she's not an ugly girl. But she's an ugly girl, if that makes sense. She's not an ugly girl, but she's a very ugly girl, if that makes sense. Okay? Now, move fast forward. We have Clay. Um, before we get into the whole get together, we have Clay who um, finally comes home. Clay knows where home is. He comes home and we see AD in the kitchen with her with him and you know they're discussing their wedding what the colors are going to be and you know they're looking at the marriage license cuz they have to get their marriage license together and she talks about having to circle in deceased for her dad which is really really sad um but you know they talk about this stuff they they talk about you know just getting ready for the wedding and here comes Clay unprovoked just unprovoked this conversation is just like, bruh, I, I, I can't, I can't. Before I get into the conversation, I just want to say this. I, I saw, I've seen a lot of commentary online about AD's leave out and her lashes. Now I will say the leave out to me was not that big of a deal. I feel like she obviously has like three bundles. A lot of y'all don't understand. Like when you're doing sew-ins, at least me, Whenever I do sewings, I at least have to have four and a half bundles to five bundles. Like, it has to at least be five bundles for me. P period. When you guys are out here doing the three bundles and you don't have thick hair or you don't have enough hair at the top to blend in with your natural hair, you're left with AD. That's why that leave out has been questionable all season. But it wasn't a big deal to me. I mean, she's not the first person with a leave out that's been bad. Like, and she won't be the last. Like, we all, we learn, we grow, period. I just wish that there was a black woman behind the camera to let her know, hey girl, you know, like, that. this is why we need more black people in production. To make sure that black women don't get caught slipping when they're filming these shows. But also, I want y'all to look at AD here. 
Look at how beautiful this girl is. I mean, this expression is not the best, but look at how beautiful she is. Like, she's actually very, she's a very gorgeous girl. I don't know why she was wearing those big ass strip lashes. It just was terrible to me. I don't know who told her that shit looked good. It was horrible. Um, but she's having this conversation with Clay and here is how it goes. I've always heard it's so easy to get married, mm -hmm. but it's so tough to get out of yeah. it. Like, my, like I told you, my dad cheated year seven into the marriage. I just feel like it affected my mom. So it's like, I got that on my mind of like, damn, I don't want to be in a situation where I'm ever going to cheat. I think that's... Uh, yeah, that's and that's cool. like, do you think that's like the biggest thing is that you're going to cheat? Nobody. Clay. You know, I mean, my daddy cheated on my mama. Clay, how's your day going? You know, my daddy, he cheated on my mother. Clay, you want anything to go with that hot dog you got on? You want some fries? No, nah, but let me tell you something. My daddy cheated on my mama, and he used to take me on the infidelity trips. Yeah, during Black Women's, Black History, Black Women's Month. I used to be down there helping my daddy cheat on my mama. Just unprovoked. Nobody, Clay, my daddy cheated on my mama. Nobody, Clay, my dad, yeah. You know my daddy, he cheated on my mother, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know Jay-Z cheated on Beyonce. Yeah, and Will Smith was cheating on Jada, yeah. And that's why I just can't trust myself to be faithful during Black Women's, Black History, Black Women's Month. What? And then it's the next thing that he says that's crazy to me. Watching Love is Blind last yesterday and kind of seeing the examples I saw, I was like, wow, like, that is what a husband is supposed to come. Like, he says all the right things. It's like, me, I don't. I don't there's a lot of things that way I think that I don't think is mature enough for a marriage. And then I'm watching, you know, I'm actually watching a show and I'm seeing some of the men that are, like, really ready. And I'm looking at myself, I'm like, damn, I'm a little bit embarrassed by that. This man went back and watched Love is Blind while he's filming Love is Blind. He went back and watched season one with Cameron and Lauren and said, I can't do it. I can't do it. Cameron, that's a faithful man right there. That's a good man, Savannah. I can't do that. Nah, I can't. Married? Oh, you really gotta get married at the end of this? I can't do that. Oh, we really gotta get married at the like it's it, y'all expecting for us to get married at the end of this. I can't do that. No. Nah. <laughs> These men were really like ready to be married. I'm not ready to be married, but as unready to be married as I am, I signed up for this show. Yeah. I signed up for this show knowing that I was not ready to be married. This is Clay. This is Clay. And, and this is AD. Just, just soaking it in. She just so like not once that she said, you know what? Maybe we should just cut our losses here. You're, the, you're clearly not ready for this. But no, no. He's fighting his demons, and she gonna fight them too, baby. She. Let me tell you something. She got her running shoes on. She got her boxing gloves on, and she gonna fight his demons for him. Yes, yeah, like the good, like the Michelle Obama that she is. Whew, my lord. Everything you've done has been simply but amazing. Like you've had my back. You've like every conversation that we've had, like. We're able to get by things, which is what I love. I, I love our sexual chemistry, our gossip, you know? Yeah. He never says, you're beautiful, you're smart. It's always, I love our gossip, I love our sexual chemistry, and I love how you have my back. It's never, I love like that you have a passion for such and such. You know what? I could see you being a good mother one day. You know, I love your outlook on life, how you see things. I enjoy just being with you. Never. It's always, I, you know how many times this man has said, I like when we gossip? He's, he's said that several times. That's why I know he gay as fuck. Like, this nigga's gay. And I, I'm, I'm giving him a lot of grace by saying he's bisexual, but I think he's fucking gay. Because what straight man keeps telling their girl, I love when we gossip? 
I love when we gossip. And he's so happy to say it too. Like, look, look, look at how he's cheesing when he said it. I love, I love, I love when we gossip. Let, let me rewind it back so I can play it for y'all so y'all can see. You've, like, every conversation that we've had, like, we're able to get by things, which is what I love. I, I love our sexual chemistry and our gossip, you know? The joy in his eyes. Well, I love our gossip. I love, I... I love, I love our gossip. I love when we gossip. The joy in his eyes to gossip with this girl. This man is bisexualist. And y'all are not going to convince me otherwise. That man is Carlton from season one. I'm telling you. He is not living his authentic life. To me, it's the date. So, it, like, I don't know. I feel like love is love. Like, why does that they had to dictate our relationship. I am okay with a yes or a no mm -hmm. at the altar. I can, mm -hmm. you know, pick myself up. And get married at the end of this like for me I don't understand why we have to get married at the end of this that was a whole point that is the whole point of the show the whole point of love is blind is to fall in love with someone sight unseen get engaged get married that's the whole point of the show Mind you, the only time we ever see Clay, the only time AD ever sees Clay is when they are filming. I'm not understanding why she's still there. Like somebody has to explain to me why she's still here. Why are you still here? He like every chance this man Get he tells this girl, I don't want to be with you. I'm not committed to this. I don't want to come home. I don't feel like I need to come home. We're going to get into the couples getaway, uh, couples get together, but I'll say this. Like in the next episode, we do see uh, her and Clay go out and he takes her out on a nice date. And, you know, she's just going crazy. I mean, she's crazy about it. Oh, my God, he's taking me out. And it's like, yeah, girl, he's taking you out because it's being filmed. <laughs> the only time he shows any interest in you is when there is a camera present. That is it, girl. AD is just, you're too pretty. Your body too T for you to be this but like I said that meeting with her mom told me everything she is gung-ho for the way he looks and I'm pretty sure he's putting that dick on her and, and, and to be honest too I don't know I don't even think he's fucking her like that cause he hardly sees you he only sees you, like, he only comes home when y'all are going to film. So, you know, let me just go on there and just give her a little dick, you know. He fucking you in between when he really fucking his real nigga. Like, it's, just, I don't know. Next, let's go to this, let's go to this couple, all the couples meet up, child. This might got a good point right now where I feel good. I feel like I got so much stronger with you with this process. Just mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm, I'm also thinking like, you know, how better can I get, you know, <laughs> rocking with you? You, know? you rock with me, I'm going to take you to the moon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I promise you. Just wanted to show you guys that quick clip of their date. This is a man who was literally telling this woman, I'm going to cheat on you because my daddy cheated on you. I don't know why we have to get married at the end of this experience where marriage is the goal. Love is love. You know, I don't have to come home to you every night. Like, you know, you need to be okay with my schedule. Like, literally, he gives this girl nothing, and she just eats it up. So all the couples get together, and noticeably, um, Clay's not there. He's at work somewhere. Uh, Jeremy's not there yet. Uh, first things first, we get into Laura and Jeremy, and we find out that Laura has not seen Jeremy since the whole debacle with Sarah. 
Um, we also saw Jimmy meet Jess and surprisingly he didn't choke. I was ready for Jimmy to choke. I was ready for Jimmy to choke, but seeing Jimmy and Jess together was very interesting. Seeing Chelsea and Trevor together was very interesting too. I'm not going to hold y'all. Jimmy looks very good next to Jess. Him and Jessica look very good together. Am I the only one who, who, who saw that? Like, look at them. Jimmy actually looks very good next to Jessica. Like, they make a very good looking couple. Very good looking couple. They look better together than he does next to Chelsea. Um, I... Well, we're going to get into their conversation, but I do really think that Jessica was too into herself in the pods. That's what I'm gathering, especially like with some interviews that I've seen with Jimmy. Um, Because I saw Jimmy say that Jessica got a very nice edit and that, you know, in the pods, she kept telling him like, I'm a baddie, I'm this, I'm a baddie, I'm a baddie. Like he just felt like she was very into herself and she was very like pushy and that's what pushed him away i feel like if she she i feel like she could have been into herself but if she wasn't so like propose to me now he probably would have proposed to her but y'all not gonna convince me that they don't look good together they look good together they look very very good together we had our biggest fight it's been a roller coaster i want you to be good to her. Not me being the one giving you advice. This is like, you're like, please shut up. I don't know, I, I get nervous around you. I told you I've never dated anybody that's even remotely like you, personality-wise. I just felt really pressured with you. You read my letter out loud, and then you were dead silent. Mm -hmm. And when you were silent, that was so loud. Remember that letter that she said she had wrote years ago, which we, that girl did not write that letter years ago. She wrote it the night before child for Jimmy. Um, but I mean, after he did read that letter, it's true. He did go a little silent on her, but maybe he was just, you know, like digesting it. I really feel that she didn't really give him a chance, but it's crazy because now he's with Chelsea who, has her has Jessica's personality times 10. Her delivery is so ugly. The way she treats him is so ugly. And I know he's kicking himself in the ass for that, that he didn't choose this girl. But, you know, he's being such a stand-up guy. Oh, no, I, picked, I made the right decision. No, you didn't, baby. You should have picked her. Like, I really feel him and Jessica would have made a good couple, a good, stable couple. Chelsea, Megan on Fox needs to be on medication, like ASAP. But you know, it was nice to see that Jimmy didn't need no EpiPen, child. Jimmy didn't need no EpiPen, he didn't choke. And then later on you see Jessica saying that she was the one who almost felt like she needed an EpiPen when uh, Jimmy came over to hug her. After you told me I'll be holding my breath when I see you. I said, you better have that EpiPen on me because your airways are going to close. Oh. I was the one who was about to fall out and need a medic. When you went in for a hug, I was like, no. It's hot and heavy with these two. And they look really, they look really good together. Like, I, I'm kind of shocked. They look really good together. And damn, I wish this would have worked out. Like, you know, now he's with Fiona and we see how that's turning out. So anyway, child, let's go to the next episode. We're still at this cookout. So now you have Chelsea and Trevor that meet up. You know, Chelsea saw him from afar when Trevor showed up and she's like, man, that's a beefcake. That is a beef. That is a piece of beef right there. That's a beefy ass man right there. You know, and um, he's their son's mullet. And, uh, and Trevor showed up without his mullet and without his girlfriend that he apparently left. <laughs> to come on the show, child, and that he's currently threatening. <laughs> um, but him and Chelsea sit down and they have a nice chat, but he's still like asking her 
all the questions that he had asked her from the pause. Like, you know, had I asked you first, would you have said yes to me? I did love you and, and I do love you. I think you're amazing and seeing you and talking to you is really nice for me. I feel like life with you would be really fun and uh, I feel like you would give me so much love and you were giving that to me. Yeah. And, um, which is, you know, that comes with the engagement, but I feel like it would be really fun and easy with you and, um, it's, it's yeah. yeah I'm, not, I'm not like an arguer. No. Even if I did something terrible, I don't see you mm -hmm. like yelling at me. Mm -mm, mm -mm. This man has no idea. Yeah, I'm not arguing. I, I wouldn't see us arguing. I don't think you'd never yell. This man has no idea the bullet that he dodged. Has no idea the bullet that he dodged. Maybe you would be arguing with this lady from sun up to sundown. Sun up to sundown. But she did tell him that um, um, she would have still picked Jimmy. And she, but she told Trevor that he was her number one. And I found that interesting because Jimmy said the same thing to Jessica, that she was his number one too. And she basically makes Jimmy out to be the bad guy. Like, but like, oh, but you know, it's me too. But she starts crying and shit. And it's like, girl, I really just don't like this girl. She's just insufferable. It's hard. Do you, you don't want to talk about <laughs> It's been hard to not think of you sometimes. I got everything I needed from you every single day. Oh, wow. <laughs> so funny to see her talk to Trevor because she they bring up that he still has his bracelet, right? And they're flirting about it, and he's like, but this is the same girl who be going off on Jimmy. Like, look at this. But, like, it would be cool to see. Yeah. I'm glad you get the bracelet. Yeah. I have mine still. Do you, you want to sit? <laughs> Is Jimmy coming okay. over and kissing her? I'm great. I feel uncomfortable. I'm going to get kissed on the cheek. You want one? Yeah. Go on. Wow. Now he kissed Trevor. Jimmy is so secure. Like, Jimmy's a good man. That's a good man. So you have Jeremy and Laura who finally talk to each other. And here's how it goes. I made it pretty well known the other day that I was pretty upset with some of the things that was said. And I said I wanted to try. I was 100% ready to try. So I text you. I asked for your address so I can send you some flowers. And I felt like I just kept getting like rude responses. When I tell you I want to send you something or when I tell you or I ask you how you're doing and one of the first responses I get is it sucks to know that your name changed from fiance to just Jeremy in my phone. <laughs> Laura's like, mm -hmm. that's typically what happens when you cheat. Okay. I took my key to the side of it. You know, maybe next time you think before you cheat. You know what I'm saying? That's what happens when you cheat, baby. Now you want to send flowers? Kiss my ass. Puss ass trying to send flowers. Bitch, send flowers to your motherfucking mama, not me, puss ass ho. Sucks to fucking hear that. I politely declined to give you my address and said no thank you because flowers is not what I'm looking that. for. No, I'm going to disagree with that. You politely declining is you. We're going to disagree with that. I said no thank you. And I. I mean, you didn't say no thank you. We, uh, we, now we, now Laura, we've seen enough of you to know you told that man <laughs> to suck your ass with a straw, okay? Like, that's been your delivery with this man since day one. So you didn't say, it was nothing polite that came out your motherfucking mouth, okay? Let's just be for real. Let's be for real. I'm fucking tired of you doing this bullshit where you take things and you flip it around to try to make like it's something it's not. You don't know me. I am me. Clearly. I've been authentically me since day one when we met in the pods. You on the other hand are a con artist. Not a con artist. <laughs> You have feelings for another person that you don't know how to process. You don't know how to communicate your feelings or much of anything. And you're going to flip it around on me yet again. 
<laughs> I did come into this with the best intentions. Well, I definitely don't fucking believe that. Why don't you believe that? What? The best intentions? You think you came in here with the maturity level you need to have a marriage? To com fully commit to someone and protect their heart and protect them in your relationship? You think you were prepared to do that? No. Okay. There's no way in hell. Did I not say I had, like, I owned what I did? Have I not said that repeatedly? Oh, I don't know. Three days later. Three days later, and then you're confused why I don't meet you with joy and happiness. What is, what happens in your head? Seriously. We're clearly not going to have a civil conversation about this. That's fine. Okay. I'll come get the rest of my shit tomorrow. I already packed it up, so it's already ready to go. You oh. packed up my shit? <laughs> Jeremy said, I packed up your shit already, girl. <laughs> you ain't got to come pack up shit, baby. Your shit is outside. See who Okay? Your shit is there, y'all. All right? Girl, you gotta come pack up shit, bitch. Your shit is outside. Great. I don't know what you expected from this conversation. You made your mind up a week ago. I didn't. As as I didn't. Agree to disagree. I'm not gonna agree on shit. I disagree with you all. <laughs> Great. Everybody can feel the tension between us at this point, and can we at least just put it aside for today? <laughs> because I do want to try and have a good time with the people that are around here. Why the fuck is that your concern? <laughs> your engagement just ended. It's absurd. You are not a man. You're not man enough for me. You've never fucking happened, okay? End of story. Do whatever the fuck you want with whoever the fuck you want. That's fine. The narcissism is literally nauseating. I wish you the best. Same. Go kick rocks with open-toed fucking shoes. <laughs> Mind you, this is Jeremy. Kicking rocks with open-toed shoes. Because, <laughs> baby, Sarah is down to the barbecue. Sarah is down to the barbecue, baby. And this gonna be him and Sarah in just a minute. On their way, on both of their way to buy open toe shoes, baby. They don't give a fuck. This man, like, you are looking at a man who gives no fucks. This man do not care. And you know what? I'm gonna tell you when I feel Jeremy checked out on Laura. First of all, when you look back at their relationship, their relationship, period, sucked. Their relationship sucked. But I'm going to tell you when I personally feel Jeremy checked out on Laura. It was the night of the bean dip incident. If you go back and you watch it and you dissect it, okay? She told Jeremy to go bean dip AD, okay? And when you first look at it, I broke it down already in my previous reviews. When you first look at it, you know what? Let me bring it up. Was it bean dip? Oh, she told me you would know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> bean dip? Not the bean dip. She's like, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Okay, let's continue. Oh, I said, do you do a good walk in? She will literally no. die. Beans? Listen. <laughs> listen. <laughs> bean dip? Not the bean she will literally no. die. I said, Jeremy, do it when we walk in. She will literally die. I said, Jeremy, do it when we walk in. She will literally die. Okay? This is what Jeremy says. Told me to do it to you. And I was like, I'm going to get fucking canceled. No, I will no, fight absolutely you. not. I will fight him. She set me up. She was trying to set me up for some bullshit. <laughs> okay? All right? Now you have AD saying, no, don't do that. I would definitely fight you. And he's like, yeah, she was trying to set me up for some bullshit. Let's continue. Titty snack. Like a fucking titty snack. She smacked the shit on my titty. Smacked your titty? Yeah, like, titty. Uh, literally hit, hit. She's wild. She told me to do that. And I'm like, what is she wrong with you? told you to do that to who? You. That's and I'm so like, crazy. What? I literally Mind you, she said that she told him to do it. 
She said it. I just replayed it for you. She said she told him to do it. So now that the tides are, are, are turning, here's Laura. Laura, get over here. Babe, yeah. I said, what did you say? Uh, we can't Who did you know. offend? Thank you, baby. Probably AD. I hope not. Did you try to No, you offended me. You offended me. Oh, I offended Clay? What is it being what? You're making something out of nothing. No, no, I'm I'm making making out of now you're making something out of nothing. Because now AD's upset and so is Clay. Okay? Now she pins it totally on Jeremy. Okay? What? B, what? You did say, Bean did AD. Oh, God. And what does Brittany say? You did say, Bean did AD. You, you told him to Bean dip her. She told her white fiance to go Bean dip AD, a black woman. Okay, she told her fiance to go slap this black woman's titty. Mind you, we've seen how they objectified AD's body this season. Because she's a black woman with a big ass. My Lord, they've never seen a black woman with a big ass before. You know what I'm saying? They just don't know how that's scientifically possible. Mind you, when God created ass, it was in correlation to black women. Okay? This ain't Maybelline, bitch. She was born with that. She was born with that bookshelf. Okay? All right? And so now we see the tides turning. Okay? So here we go. A joking way! It was in a joking way! Now we see the tides turning. Right? And so then we find out later on, Jeremy, when they got back to their hotel, he didn't fuck with her. He didn't fuck with her. To me, that's when shit really went left. Because Laura is a mean person. She's mean. I think she's person personally, I think she's fucking racist. And even if AD were not black, you sent your fiance to assault someone. That is sexual assault. That is sexual assault. And at this reunion, at this Love is Blind reunion, I want to see the lattes ask her about that shit. I want, I want, I want her to get bean dipped. This bean dip incident needs to be talked about at this fucking reunion. It better be talked about at this reunion. How AD's body was not only objectified that night, but how you sent your white man to go sexually assault a black woman on national television during filming. Yeah, I need that. I need that. And so I personally believe this is where the tide change with Jeremy. But not only that, it's an example of just how mean she is. She's a mean person. And we see the way she talked to Jeremy every day. It's like she was repulsed by him. When, when he met her parents, she talked shit about him then. It's like she just found him repulsive. When she went to his home, she thought his home was too clean. Let, let's say he did stage his home. Let's say he did stage his home. We've been watching Love is Blind for six seasons. This is the, these, these are the cleanest homes we've seen. Every season we've seen mattresses on the floor. We, we've seen beds with no headboards. We've seen doodle with flies on top. Girl, is that what you were looking for? So anyway, yeah, let's go back to the um, cookout. It's like what Jeremy did was fucked up, but... I don't think Laura takes any accountability or has self-awareness for the way she has spoken to this man since the day they met. Like, I can't be the only person who noticed how she just, like, a lot of people really lack self-awareness. It's really weird. It's weird. Not saying that Jeremy ain't wrong because this is the same motherfucker who left his family. This man left his family, his child, his wife to come on Love is Blind, okay? But Laura's not totally innocent in this either. The way you treated him was repulsive. No wonder in his mind, he's like, okay, I kind of want to go back to my other choice. No wonder. No wonder. It's not right, but no wonder. No wonder. So let's get back to the barbecue child. Sarah done made her little entrance. And you have A.D. who confronts her. Asking a man 
that you know is fully engaged and he did not choose you. Is the door still open? It's I didn't say is the door still open. Okay, okay, I read it. Now, is it me? Like I, so you have AD questioning Sarah, basically like, girl, like, what were you thinking sending that message, right? Now, I don't know AD's relationship with Sarah at this point, but why is why is this AD's business? Like, I, like, don't get me wrong, like, AD's correct, but why is this your concern? Mind you, you doing all this windmilling for a white woman who literally told her fiance to sexually assault you. Just saying. I wouldn't be doing all this windmilling for that bitch. I'm sorry. And if the shoot, here's the thing too. Laura was at this barbecue. We didn't see Laura confront Sarah. Sarah, when she came in, she hugged Laura. Laura didn't have no smoke. No smoke, didn't say shit. So girl, why are you fighting this white woman's battle during Black Women's Black History, Black Women's Month? Why? Somebody gotta explain that to me. You, you, like Sarah said something later on that was so true. She was like, you know, AD need to be worried about her own relationship and do. I ain't gonna hold you. Cause your man don't even come home unless y'all filming. Every time you talk to your man, he's telling you how he gonna cheat on you cause his daddy cheated on his mama 80 years ago. Girl, get a grip. Get a grip. Now Sarah was dead ass wrong. When Sarah tries to do the whole, oh, well, you know, I, I, it, the, the, in the we were in this experience. I don't give a fuck. You know he's engaged. So why are you sending that DM? Then we come to find out Jeremy had done told Sarah that he was breaking things off with Laura. <laughs> this shit is a mess. But, you know, looking at Sarah, too, it's like, girl, you, you're not ashamed. You're not ashamed. Like, so you went through this process with this man. He didn't choose you. And now you're okay with being his backup to the girl he actually chose. So much so that you y'all y'all creeping at y'all creep creep creeping at some damn parking lot till five o'clock in the morning. Like, what are you doing, girl? Like, how like girl? What are you doing? Y'all ain't got no shame. We gotta bring back shame. So then her and, and her and Jeremy get together and they have a conversation. Like they're painting me out to be this person that I'm this floozy that goes after men that are engaged. You're I'm not, a realist. You're not that person. I'm a realist. I was Girl, you are a floozy <laughs> who goes after men who are engaged. Like what the fuck? Like what <laughs> girl? Self-awareness is something that a lot of you bitches lack. We need more self-awareness. I'm not a floozy that goes after engage, men that are engaged. And this is five minutes earlier. You was after a man that was engaged, sis. Like, what a what girl, what? Just so much a part of this is anybody fucking else. I'm so I sent that message well before you got back because of how I felt when I got back. Like it had Asshole, don't be crying now. I 100% agree with don't everything be, you're saying. Of I course, you do because you were cheating. Treat yourself. Treat who I am. Of course. And I'm I, fully, glad I fully embraced the experience, right? I fully did exactly what exactly. I needed to do for me, for the reason that I came here, which was to meet the love of my life, not to make fucking friends. I have great friends. Well, girl, you obviously need your friends not great enough because why your friends didn't tell you, hey, puss asshole, sit your ass the fuck down, that motherfucker engaged. He is engaged. Y'all hoes need better friends. What about your friends? Are they gonna stand around? Are they gonna let you down again? What about your friends? Whoa. <laughs> Y'all, it is 141. <sighs> and I got work tomorrow, child. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this season. I'm tired of this season. <laughs> but it's a good messy ass season. I ain't gonna hold you. What about your friends? Are they gonna ain't around? 
I'm never gonna let you down again. Child, anyway, so after that puss ass hoe got to crying, and of course Jeremy was like, you know, I fully agree. Cause we, we already established Jeremy, Jeremy is Haitian. Jeremy is Haitian, he got a whole side wife back at the ranch. Okay? That motherfucker don't give a fuck about being faithful to nobody. Okay? So after they had this conversation, they said, well, yeah, so anyway, y'all, um, so after they had this conversation, they're like, so what you trying to do? You trying to go jet skiing? Do you want to ride jet skis? Let's okay. Do it. Let's do it. Okay, let's do it. I'll do it. Hey, hey. Are you doing okay? Dude, look at, I literally, the guy is not deserving of anyone's attention. Oh. Bitch, they on the jet ski. Do bitch, I they on their way to buy open-toe open toe shoes to kick rocks with. Do I think that she was right in her fucking actions? Not so much. Nah, this is crazy. Are we kidding off? Okay. But it's like, he's the one that made a commitment to me. He's the one that got down on one fucking knee. Hell no. Nah. my hand in marriage. He's the one that was supposed to protect my fucking heart. And he has it. Bitch, they on a day. way to get his open toe shoes. I'm screaming. Bye. <laughs> that motherfucker said we on our way, we on the jet skis, we on our way to go find some open toe shoes to kick rocks in, bitch. We gone. Yeah. They on the jet skis, bitch. Don't give a fuck. Um, that's crazy. Jeremy, you need your ass beat. You need your ass beat. I ain't gonna hold you. You need your ass beat. And Sarah, so do you. You need your ass beat. AD, you not the one to do it. Okay, sister? Okay? This is not your count on me through thick and thin. A friendship that will never end. None of these bitches are your friends. Laura's not your friend, okay? Don't ever do that again. Don't you ever windmill for a white woman during Black History, Black Women's Black History Month ever again in your life, okay? Or I will call Jonathan Majors on your ass. Okay? I will whisper Jonathan Majors three times in your bathroom and have his ass haunt you. Okay? Don't you ever do that fuck shit again. Alright? Alright, y'all. So after this, everybody went um, wedding dress shopping. I don't give a fuck about the wedding dress shopping. Um, AD did look beautiful, though. She looked gorgeous in her dress. Um... Oh my God, Amy's mom was so precious. So, so, so precious. Um, and what else? There was a couple dates, and of course, you had, you had Megan on Fox and Jiminy Cricket getting another fight, child. I don't give a fuck about them people. So that's it for these two episodes, child. This is a mess. <laughs> this is mess. Mess. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm loving it. I'm loving it, though, okay? But yeah, y'all, so apparently next episode is going to be the weddings. So drop that in the comments right now and let me know who y'all think finna get married. <sighs> okay. I'm done. I'm tired. I'm going to have to wake up and edit this shit and have it out for y'all. I, I can't. <sighs> I had a long, long day coming. <laughs> I'm so tired. Alright y'all, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. All these diamonds on my body and they crystal clear. I make magic with these hundreds, watch them disappear. Uh-huh. Big ol' raindrops up in my ear. If you gon' name drop, let's get it clear. Just you